hi guys welcome back to my channel and if you're new here my name is Hannah Renee and it is so nice to meet you today we're gonna be talking about rejection talking about friends dictating our happiness and just having a little Jesus talking video with you guys today so without further ado let's just jump right on into this video First, I want to share a little bit of a backstory for you and why this is an important conversation for me to have with you guys today. So let's get into the backstory part. I am a natural people pleaser. I love to be with people, but I do have a hard time with always wanting to please them. And something that has been hard for me throughout my life is letting people dictate my happiness or dictate my emotions. And Alec always told me that I needed to stop doing this because it was really a terrible thing, habit that I used to have, but it's just a natural human thing. I don't think it's just a me thing, but I think this is a human thing that a lot of people have a hard time with. If somebody was mad at me, I would do one of two things. I would either obsess over the situation and I would think of every possible reason why they could be mad at me or if I knew I would think of everything I would say if they came up to me and talked to me or I would think of how to confront them and I would just constantly be thinking about it and I would talk to so many people about the situation and the second thing I would do is if they rejected me I would reject them back harder and I would fight back with what they were fighting with me and if they were going to treat me bad then I was going to treat them bad which is also just an ugly reality an ugly thing in my heart that I shouldn't be doing to anybody now as far as friendships go and this time in my life I'm in a really in between place where I have a bunch of friends here in Tennessee but none of them are very deep relationships yet because I just met a lot of people and we just haven't built that depth in between us and I have a lot of friends in California who I've had deep friendships with but I don't keep in contact with them so I have lots of different types of friendships also side note I just want to clarify I'm not telling this story to like have pity on me or anything but I'm telling this story because I feel like it's relatable and I don't feel like we talk about it much about how to deal with rejection and how to deal with friendships. So I'm telling you that because I know so many other people have gone through way worse things than I have and my story is really not that bad compared to other people. So just take that for what it's worth. I know that this is not to make you feel bad or to pity me at all, but this is just to share an honest reality of my life and just for it to be an encouragement to you. So, side note, done. <laughs> now that I'm in this in-between place, I find myself paying attention to people a lot more because I'm wondering what people are thinking here when I walk around campus and they don't really know me. <laughs> they don't know my story and I'm wondering who the heck they think I am. Like this random California girl coming to Tennessee, like who could they possibly think I am? And then I wonder what people back home are thinking and I wonder like if they think I've changed or if they think I'm different. In all honesty, these people are probably not even thinking about me at all. So this is just me obsessing over something stupid, but this is the thoughts that I have in my head on a day-to-day -day basis. The other day I had some friends that didn't treat me the best. No shade to them or anything because I'm still friends with them, but they just weren't treating me the best and they weren't realizing it and I was taking the approach of if you're gonna not treat me good I'm not gonna treat you good I felt myself having this old spiral of emotions and just wondering why they would treat me that way and what was wrong with me and just all these dumb questions that I don't need to be asking myself but I just do because I'm human and the Lord spoke to me in that moment and he spoke to me a verse to give you a little backstory the people that were not treating me great were excluding me and I don't really take well to being excluded I'm like really fragile in that area so the Lord spoke to me this verse and it was John 15 16 it says you didn't choose me but I chose you and I appointed you to bear much fruit and that was such an encouragement to me because even though people were failing me were excluding me were not choosing me 
the Lord still was choosing me and he chose me first. And not only does he choose me, but he builds me up and encourages me and appoints me to bear fruit, which is even greater than just being chosen because the fact that Jesus would choose me and all of my mess ups is kind of amazing. If you don't know Jesus, then do you know that he chooses you and he loves you unconditionally. But even past that, he still chooses me and appoints me and wants me to do amazing things in his name, which is even way better. That is just a really big encouragement to me. I don't know if that's speaking to you right now, but that's speaking to me. So I tell you all this story and I tell you this Bible verse and what Jesus has been speaking to me because I want to encourage you with this whole rejection topic and friendships topic because I'm sure that if you, all of you were sitting in front of me right now and I said, raise your hand if you've been rejected, it would be literally 99%. Maybe one person that is super young and <laughs> hasn't had a lot of dealings with people yet hasn't experienced that but most of us have experienced a rejection or a mistreatment or something going on with a friend in any stages of our life so i'm here to encourage you today on how we should react and how we should think about these things that happen to us people still do mean things they still do things intentionally and unintentionally and we have to learn how we're going to react to that in a healthy way. So if you're the person that is obsessing over everything, like I was talking about that I do sometimes, then I encourage you to let it go. Let it go. Like the song, let Elsa speak to you. <laughs> because if you let it go and if you give it to God, he will give you a plan and an idea that is way better than your idea of how to deal with the situation. Please, if you're the obsessive one, don't continue to talk to people about the situation. Don't think of every scenario about the situation, whether it's what am I going to do if they come up and talk to me and how am I going to talk to them? And what am I going to do if they talk to this person? Like literally don't think about those things. Give your mind a break and just give it to Jesus. Most of the time when I've given something to Jesus, he has told me to confront, which is so humbling and so uncomfortable and painful. But Jesus wants us, it literally says in Matthew 18, I think it is, where it says, deal with your issues with your brother first before you come to me. So Jesus will more than likely tell you to confront that person and even if you don't do something wrong, I still feel like it's good to apologize and just be like, hey, I'm sorry for blah, blah, blah. Just apologize because you don't know what their perspective is on the situation. You just know how it feels to be rejected. But please don't do this like immediately. Give yourself some time before you do this because it will not go well if you do it in the spur of the moment when you're super angry. Now, if you're the person that wants to reject when you're rejected, I encourage you to ask yourself the question, would you want Jesus to reject you every time you hurt him? Because I definitely don't think you would want that because I've hurt Jesus so many times, even if I just making my own decisions, that still hurts Jesus's heart. Even if I didn't directly hurt him, it still is hurtful. I know that we don't typically think that when we're in the midst of frustration and we just want to hurt other people because of what they've done to us, but that's an area that we probably need to have fixed in our heart. And sorry to be honest with you, but if you do have that issue, I encourage you to just ask Jesus to heal that area in your heart because that's probably an area of hurt that you haven't dealt with yet. So just praying for you, praying that you deal with that because that is not a healthy way to deal with rejection. This is something I don't feel like we talk about a lot because when we're angry, we feel like we deserve to be angry. And this is definitely true. I definitely think that whatever has happened to you in most scenarios, you'd probably deserve to be angry. But what we have to learn and what we have to realize is even if we're allowed to be angry, that is not the way that we're supposed to deal with these situations. So if you're feeling angry, be angry. Allow yourself a day or two to be angry, but be angry in a quiet place and then come to the Lord with that situation. 
so that you have a new perspective, a new way of looking at the other person, the other situation, because that person is also a child of God to you. It doesn't matter what they did to you, they're still loved by Jesus. So that is what we need to be thinking about when we're dealing and when we're confronting with this rejection. So those are my little words of wisdom for you today. And if you've never watched a Jesus talking video, welcome. Thank you for staying to the end. I do love talking about Jesus and I love talking about Jesus applying things to our lives. So I feel like this rejection thing is common for everybody. And that's why I wanted to share it with you today because I was dealing with this the other day and the Lord just spoke to me. So when the Lord speaks to me, I want to share it with you guys. So thank you for watching. If you do like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. And let me know if you have any other Jesus talking videos you want to see from me because I love to do those for you. And that's it. I will see you guys next Monday. Bye guys.